a Facebook, <laughs> a Facebook universe. Sorry, we are trying out the selfie stick for the first time ever. It's Dave, going great. It's so good. Uh, <laughs> We're really good at this. <laughs> My head needs to be like we need to. There we go. We need to angle it up a little bit so that it's more than just like the floating head of Ashley. <laughs> All right, differences are getting worse. All right, differences do not work for selfie sticks. <laughs> so what are we talking about today, Dan? We're talking about guns we didn't know we had. But we knew we had them. Dan told me to say that. Um, one of the things about our collection is that we've got over 7,000 guns in the CFM, and then we've got over 8,000 guns in the entire center. And I've been here for, I've been coming out here for about seven years now, and I've gotten different curator tours from many different curators who have run the museum. I've given myself a few. <laughs> Nobody comes along, it's just me talking. Uh, you know, and we all kind of have our favorites that we talk about. But now that we're doing the new museum, why don't you talk about some of the stuff that we've kind of come oh, up with? I'm going to, oh, this is all me now. <laughs> all right, that's how it's going to be. That's how it's going to be. What are we doing, Dan? So right now, we are picking object lists for the new museum. Ashley's working on the embellished arms gallery. I'm working on the military wing. Do. Do right tomorrow, then. which it's is fine. tomorrow. By it's totally fine. <laughs> I told Dan to talk about some military history guns he really you know, found to be interesting on this project, and he just kind of gave me a blank stare. So I, I don't want to know. Pressure. I don't. I don't want to know what that means. It's going but awesome. he has to have an object list by tomorrow. So it's only like three hundred guns. It's fine. It's totally fine. Um, but one of the things that we've been noticing, and, and we worked on a timeline, so starting in 300 BC, going all the way up through today, uh, we were working on you know, kind of picking out the highlights of gun history, regular history, what's going on in the world at the time that something's being developed, and that was hard. It took us, <laughs> it took us all day one day. <laughs> to, to come up with it, and as if you've seen that post, then you know that you know, aliens and George Washington were a thing. Hey, truth the truth. Out there. <laughs> Uh, but one thing that we, I started noticing as I walk around for the embellished gallery is there are lots of guns that were like, wow, these are really cool, and we knew that we had them, and we knew that they were rare, but we didn't know all the provenance on them. And so we're now going to do something very difficult, which is oh, to Trinkish. take the phone off the selfie stick. So, like, come on in, because we want to make sure we can show you those guns up close. Or we can keep the selfie stick going. Hi. Flip it. There you go. All right, we're going to hold this. <laughs> Dan's going to be at distance. So this gun was one that we found, and by found I mean discovered it's kind of extra history, and it is actually a lever action shotgun. Um, and it's not the lever action shotgun that a lot of people associate with Winchester, um, that's the 1887 and the 1901, but it is uh, one made in 1866. And Dan, what did, you just looked something up on this, and what did you find for it that was kind of odd that we didn't necessarily realize was going on at the time that Winchester was trying to get his company started. So Winchester is known, Winchester's and Henry's known for their tube magazines. On this one in particular, uh, the tube magazine is actually a different patent from the King's loading patent or Henry's patent. It's an improvement done by Winchester, and he is actually the inventor on the patent in September of 1866 for the magazine on this gun. It's a little bit of unusual. It's like a tube inside of a tube, kind of funky thing, but uh, he is actually the patent holder, not often credited as a firearms designer. <laughs> um, as you can see, the museum is open. Um, you know, it's one of the things that we kind of looked at ourselves and we were kind of, we're not Winchester historians, although we've got a lot of Winchesters and we know a lot about Winchester, but we were kind of fascinated to find a patent with Winchester's name on it because we always talk about a shirt manufacturer route, so that was kind of interesting. So Danny, if you want to pan back down, I'll switch the camera out. Get my eyeball. <laughs> No, nope, it didn't work. There we go. There we go. All right, so pan back down. So this gun, uh, we're not 100% who made, sure who made it. We know it was made in France, and uh, we know that it used Winchester's patent from 1866, but we're not sure most of its history. But the one thing that we did find in some of our records is that they believe that a Parisian gun maker made it for Oliver Winchester. So it was a personal gun owned by Oliver Winchester, which I think is pretty pretty neat. Um, but, of course, another part of our record then just calls it patent infringement, so that's awkward. We have a comment? Yes, we do. Uh, Tom says, hey, and hey. Braxton Bragg said it was very cool, and he meant the gun, not your eyeball. Oh, uh, well, I thought my eyeball was pretty cool, but that was fun. that's fine. Um, but this lever action shotgun is a part of the, if you want to kind of pan up to the Winchester Forerunners in the Model 1866, there's a lot of really unique and quirky guns in this case that we will explore when we get into our story of the American West section, which I think we start July uh, 12th. And so we'll start to look a lot deeper in a lot of these guns. But it was neat because 
I think last year was the first time that we found the gun that was the first reference to the Winchester collection, the Jennings rifle, which is also in this case. And so now in the same case, uh, during our research, we've discovered that this gun also may have personally belonged to Oliver Winchester when he was traveling in Paris in 1866-1867. Christian Haynes says he wants our shirts. Right? Wait. Nope. Okay. So these are new shirts, if you haven't seen them. It's really dark. So. We should move over here. Yep, let's move on. We're light. Nope, didn't work. Nope, didn't All work right, enough. let's walk this way and hopefully the shirts will come. Uh, so we found that one all over my sister gun. Can we go backwards with a selfie stick? This is going to end so badly. <laughs> All right, so we have. <laughs> if you didn't notice that, uh, Danny almost died. Oh, the ladies good. But the ladies good. Shirt. You can see our shirts. Okay, so we did get these new shirts. Um, right now, only the staff have them, but I'm sure at some point we'll start selling them. And they say the Cody Firearms Museum logo on them. I'll put them on Danny's shirt because. Right and then I don't think this will read right, but it says "Gun Believable." Uh, Hashtag Gun Believable on the I back of the shirt. I can't get the camera down that far. <laughs> All right, let me hold it, Danny. You turn around. <laughs> it's gibberish, but that's fine. fine. Hashtag gun believable. So this is one of the shirts we're going to make. And a couple of other kinds of shirts. And we also have polos that, that we have um, that we'll also be rocking. And I think Danny's uh, cooking up a cool staff photo that we took earlier today so we can show off the shirts. So if you like them, let us know because then we can get the gift shop to sell them. Yeah. Cutting off Danny's head. <laughs> All right. So we had that one Oliver Winchester gun that we discovered when we were doing our object list. And we're going to go take you to another one, which has a pretty unique history. So I'm going to give the selfie stick back to Danny. I'm not going to fall this time. <laughs> this is going to give you hit an artifact though. I'm going to be real upset. So we should turn around. around. You knew what happened last time we did this. All right. All right. So you talk. Okay. So I've been working on the embellished gallery. And one thing with our collection is that our strength in the embellished gallery is definitely our late 19th century custom shop Step engraving. Back. Step back. There. Okay. A late 19th century custom shop engraving. We have some earlier embellishment. We've got a blunderbuss that the Empress of Russia, Catherine the Great, gave to King Louis XV of France. So obviously we have things that are earlier, but they're kind of few and far between in terms of a representative collection. But one of the things that I discovered really, like, really like 30 minutes ago uh, was that we have another Oliver Winchester gun in here. Sorry, sir. And it's this double barrel shotgun right here, this pin fire shotgun. And um, it's a French shotgun, and I'm not even gonna butcher the name of the manufacturer so Danny can pan up to the panel. But I was, uh, I selected it because visually it's obviously a very stunning gun and it's currently been displayed. But one of the things that I discovered as I was reading the label, as we were doing some of the reference, um, reading some of the reference material on the object was that they think that Edward Napoleon III of France gave this to Oliver Winchester. And that's not for a little while, but I don't really know if Napoleon III of France was short too. Also, fun fact, the first Napoleon was not really that short either. Uh, not as short as me, at least. But um, I thought it was really interesting because I didn't know we had anything relating to you know, French royalty, French government, because we've got Russian stuff, we've got um, things from Germany, we've got things from Asia, but this is the first one that we've kind of seen that connection to France, which I guess we now have two guns that have a connection to Oliver Winchester in France. And so this is another one of the guns that we found. And then not too far from it, sidebar. One really weird thing about this current embellished gallery is that you go from having like a French double barrel shotgun to a Russian Catherine the Great blunt lock to a, a shoots and rifle to Bill Ruger's embellished guns, kind of all in like the same area. So we're gonna work on kind of separating those out and talking a little bit about the grieving styles, the different people, and the concept of presentation and exhibition. But this shoots and rifle right here, which is above the Catherine the Great gun, um, was made specifically for a guy named Philip Best, who owned Best Brewing Company. But he gave this gun to his son-in-law, whose name was Frederick Pabst. And Pabst later changed the name of the Best Brewing Company to Pabst Brewing Company. So I always find it funny because we've got a lot of beer connections to our guns in the museum. We've got the Coors collection. That might have been it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, but not one. I know we have another connection to it. So it is kind of interesting to see a Pabst Brewing gun. But one of the things that I really like, let's flip it around. Yeah. <laughs> see if Danny can make it work. We totally did. Whoa. I just got hey, real white. It got <laughs> ghosts. Ghost does. Um, the one thing that's been really great about planning out the new museum is that we get so stuck in our stories and telling the same ones over and over again because we get different people through the museum, but it's really opened our eyes to some of the gems that are in our collection that we didn't necessarily think about 
Um, and I don't know, I'm pretty stoked to see what we find in some of the other galleries. But do you have anything to say about some of the military stuff you've been working on, Danny? <laughs> I keep she's worried that him. I'm not going to make it. So she's trying to like sneaky see if I've actually made any progress, and I'm not going to tell her. Um, but no, we have lots of uh, military firearms covering the breadth of military history, and um, thanks to the Winchester collection, we have, oh, I can't get the camera right, uh, lots of uh, early prototype firearms, unusual guns used for military service that you might not see other places um, that are going to sneak into the new military gallery. We're getting the machine guns out of the vault. We totally are. M60 is coming it's up. It's finally going to be in the museum. It's finally going to be on We get so many questions. Museum. Everyone's always like, you have M60, and I'm like, it doesn't fit in the case. But yes, so we're actually going to get a lot of that stuff out of the vault because, and I know I've said this a million times, but in 1991 when we built the museum, we were really trying to tell a Western story, and so a lot of the later Winchester machine guns didn't make it into the mu new museum, and so we're... Uh, using some TLC on those guns to make sure that they can make it out and be a part of the story of the new museum, which really embraces our encyclopedic collection rather than trying to stick to one specific area or theme. There's actually seven different galleries in the new museum, so it'll be pretty great. Why'd you look at me like that? Like what? <laughs> it's fine. Those are just a couple of things that we've discovered over the past couple of weeks as we're writing our preliminary object list. We'll make sure to keep you updated as we find more cool things. I'm sure Danny will have plenty to say tomorrow when he actually gets to work on his military history. I've already worked on it, so... Okay, Dropbox is a shared folder, so I could check it. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it's really been a, a unique opportunity for us, and I think we're going to be pretty, pretty unbearable to be around in about a year when we know most of the guns that are in this museum. Hashtag gun nerds. Hashtag gun nerds. Uh, if you guys have any questions about some of the things that we found or some of the things that Danny swung the camera around for you guys to see, you know where to ask the questions. Um, I will be Facebooking live a little bit while I'm on vacation at a couple of different museums, some more museum ambushes because people just love that. Um, but if you have any questions, you know where to find us, and... Uh, if we don't see you before, have a good holiday weekend.